Hello and welcome. Tuesday noon, my time. Marianne and I are here for our weekly conversation with the Earth. And today, yes. Marianne is taking it off. Mm. Thank you, Karina. I'm so <laughs> glad I'm here again with you. And uh, yes, we spoke a little bit ahead of this life. And uh, it was something about an energy that will be the subject for today as assuming and conclusion. And today, Karina, um, I ended up to fill in the survey for the Certified Facilitators class that's coming up within two weeks now. And from the start that it went out, I became so aware of all the assumings I had that I didn't acknowledge I had. As there is like, yeah, during the years you hear about that it is a lot of work, that it is heavy, that it's, it's nothing joyful in a matter of speaking. It's nothing of that. And yes, I chose different, even though I became aware afterwards that I had taken that as, yeah, as a conclusion, all those assumings I assumed in the background that it would be for me also. And I concluded ahead that it would be for me also. So I did have the expectations that it would be for me. So, so assuming is, is a huge energy that, yeah, there is so much in it. And for me, even more today, it's clear that we assume a lot in our life that we aren't aware of that it that it is from start that it isn't assuming that it is full of judgment that it has expectations that they are conclusions it's it's yeah it's like an automatic pilot that's driving not driving but driving our life and it's taking over, in a matter of speaking. I don't know. What are your experience with this energy? Of you know, assuming? one thing I just became aware of, we are psychic. Is it actually our stuff? And just <laughs> because it is a thought in our head, we assume that it is ours and yeah. then go from there with all the repercussions of whatever assumption we have you yeah. know and can i pick in on that because it's an energy that that can be, you say it we are so psychic that we hear all those thoughts but we assume they are ours mm -hmm. so because they are ours we can't even catch that energy that we are assuming because yeah. it's ours yes yeah. okay yeah that's that's where we uh default and it's really if you are willing to be energetically very aware and to be very present with yourself, you are not catching any of that. Mm -hmm. But what I have noticed is uh, being very present with it or catching that whiff of energy, I would almost call it, because it's so slight and fast that uh, comes through before we make it ours because it's in our head, be you know, because we conclude it. Because yeah. somewhere way in the past, we've come to judgments and use verbiage now 
that contains that judgment and we're not even aware of the fact that we have judged previously. It's a really mm. mixed ball of wax, uh, you know. It is. It, it is because uh, it, it brings me to the question also, Karina, like assuming and that expectation I was speaking about. So mm -hmm. What's the difference between expectation and assuming? Isn't it so that we glump a yeah. lot of the different, yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of the different energies? Oh, yeah. And, and, and yeah. yeah, go, go. No, go ahead. So when I became aware of that assuming and that those expectations, etc., I really started to laugh and I said, oh, hell, <laughs> like it's not, not anything of this is, is mine. And I went to earth and I asked really, ah, how is that for you? Mm -hmm. Is there any of assuming energy notable yeah. in earth and then i laughed even harder because it was oh yeah and it was like a cartoon a film like a cartoon that was passing <laughs> in front of me like oh yeah earth is let grows a flower there and does this and this and then it is assuming that no one will touch it or no one will will step on it or whatever it was i was really laughing with this yeah, it's it's really if we're willing to look at who how we operate and how we are in life, and then look at how Earth operates, we're really funny creatures. We are we are so funny creatures. I mean, I have, in all honesty, I have to laugh at myself. And in a way, at my either stupidity or ridiculousness or superiority or whatsoever, when I actually go there and say, so how does Earth function with that? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and it is green when you allow yourself to sit with that, only with that question. How does Earth go with that? How does nature go with that? Yeah. It's nearly immediately that you get the insanity of the yes. way you function. Yes, that's a good word, the insanity. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. And and that assuming because my partner came home and, and I really perceived he was really agitated and, and I asked what was up in his world. And then he started and from all those conclusions and expectations and assuming that there was in his story, it took me really a lot of energy to hear what he was saying. And I said to him, stop, sorry, I can't even hear you because there is so much energy little nothing about what is true or there is a truth with a lot of lies attached mm -hmm. in the story yeah. but because i was so present with all those energies all those lies as a sudden i became aware for myself oh i start to have more difficulties to to listen, it was not hearing, it was listen, mm -hmm. because it's it's automatically, so truth, truth, truth. And then you hear the lies, you hear yeah. the assumings, you hear the conclusions, you hear the expectations. And I started to laugh. And it was weird for him because he was really like angry. And I was laughing and I said, sorry, I'm not laughing at you, I'm not laughing with what you are saying. I'm only laughing with what I am perceiving and receiving now, mm -hmm. because it's insane. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's almost comedic. It is. <laughs> it is. It is, and you know, this morning, no, it was this afternoon with Saskia, I had a... Um, 
a little uh, live with Saskia and she mentioned also uh, that she started to look at films or yeah, more films from beyond this reality, as we call it, mm -hmm. as, as not buying in on in all those definitions and structures and, and forms, etc. And then what is assumed to be an, inven an inventation, uh, futuristic or complete invented. Yeah. To start to see like, wow, but how much is this reality an invented reality? From all those definitions, from all those structures, from all those point of views, assumings. I really um, liked what Shannon said on her contribution to the Global Bar State, that if it's not real for an animal, it's not real. It's our invention. And what I then even became aware of, how much we put energy into proving the validity of our invention. Wow. Can you spend a little bit, expand a little bit more around this? Because that's a huge energy. Uh, it came for me in connection with reading a psychological article. And I don't remember which one it was. But yeah. what I remember right now is the arguments in this article why something is the way it is yeah and that's what i consider proving our invention finding evidence for it being correct and real yeah. and isn't it so that there is assuming that you are correct Exactly. Assuming that you you're proving what is what you assume is correct, and even uh, starting with the fact that I am assuming that my invention actually exists. Yeah. Yeah. And tapping into the earth now with this energy of proof. Does Earth ever prove that she's right? It just, Earth knows things are as they are and that they are. There is no need to do anything with it. Yeah. Do you know, Karina, something I get more and more every week, more and more out of those conversations we have is space, the peace, the freedom mm -hmm. we can choose if we allow ourselves to be as earth instead of to be as our head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Our head, I'm, most I'm, of I'm the heads is <laughs> and most of our heads are around like a global <laughs> a planet earth perhaps but it's not not functioning that well no it's not and and uh you know in all honesty uh how much if i look over my life how much for most of my life have i been pressing everything through that sieve called brain and you are alone or you are you the know, only one you are the only one. <laughs> you are the only one. No one did it before you and will never do it after. <laughs> no one else will do it. I'm the master at that. No one could do oh, it yes. better than yes. me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so what do I have to invent now to prove you that you assume that you are the best in it? <laughs> and therefore you have the never ending carousel. Yes. So the perpetual true. go around. So true, so true. And that brings me like the joy I had today because I was 
as a sudden also aware that, oh, must, wait a minute, I made a different choice. As I am a person, always did it like pulling everything uh, there to the last minute because I can prove myself I can do it in a small amount of time. Oh, yeah. But this time, nothing of that was in my world. And I was asking myself, mm, but where did that came from that I made another choice? And then I thought, but why do I have to get a proof or to get it rectified that I made another choice? I just made another choice, whatever. I don't have to make it significant. But what can I take out of it? And that was like, yeah, I made another choice. And that other choice really worked well because that other choice wasn't from my head. And I had space. I had joy. I had ease. So what would it take to allow myself to choose more often different yeah. And wow. <laughs> what just what just popped for me being present with what's going on here for me is how much do we assume that in order to be successful we need to be focused on our work. Oh yes. Oh, like yes. I'm uh, for me, it's even I realized uh, I have access as part of my work or, you know, Earth is teacher or whatever you want to call it. But then I also am a photographer. And focusing on that, like editing photos, uploading to website, creating website, whatever, that is taking away of my focus from being, you know, wow. focused with that. And it, it's really, you know, once aware of it, I have to laugh. But yes. how much is that unconscious assumption? Yes, because when you say it, for me, it's the complete opposite. Yeah. For me, it's when, when I see your photos, the pictures you take, the energy there is in, there is so much in it that is earth, that is the teaching. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, and isn't it because we separate us a lot as from the focus, when you are up with one thing, you can't be there yeah. because your focus is here. Oh, yeah. It's not possible and to multitask. No, and I was made a lot, a lot of wrongness came into my world about that because, yeah, my mother always said, ah, you don't finish things because you aren't focused on one thing. You have to do one thing at a time and you start and you finish and then you start again and you finish. And it was always... Ah, making my world smaller and I couldn't get it so I made myself wrong for it because definitely I was the wrong one yeah I assumed that I was the wrong one so this brings me to, to another thing when we assume assuming we don't ask questions yeah And just oh. the overall energy of our conversation right now, how much of our assumptions has to do with somehow being wrong? Mm. What do you really mean with that? But yeah, we just talk, you have to focus on one thing, and when you're done with that, you can do the next thing. There is an implicit, implicit judgment of wrongness. 
Yeah. If you don't do it, you know, how much uh, are we judging ourselves by not fitting in and doing the things in the way we're supposed to be doing? Uh, there is an implicit wrongness. Uh, how much, on the other hand, then, uh, being uh, so convinced that our inventions are correct, that anything that doesn't fit that is wrong. So there is, I, yeah. I, I, I sort of, I see an underlying uh, red thread of wrongness going through all of it. Yeah. Or it is your own wrongness, or it yeah. is proven the wrongness of the other. Yeah. 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 Wow. Wow. That's huge. We just got wow. a question in. Uh, can you please speak more to proving things to yourself? Mm. And uh, how much proving things to myself, how much do I find evidence out there to prove that something is so. How much do I find arguments? And I can find arguments by talking with other people, by reading books, uh, by taking classes, et cetera, et cetera, that this is how things are. And yeah. I'm utilizing that to prove something to myself, which not necessarily is so. And for me, proving to myself in regards to the earth is basically through observation. I observe what is going on. I observe how the seasons are changing. I observe how animals are acting that uh, I can see, oh, this is how it is. Yeah. Because animals so that, that, don't think. <laughs> no. No, they, they know. Don't. They know. They, yeah. But we doubt our knowing. So we have to go and get the proof from our wrongness or rightness. I was, was still am because I'm aware that it is still somehow in my reality in my world is is proving my wrongness but from acting in the opposite like controlling also controlling and mm. standing for my right but often when i went into the question i became aware and i could acknowledge that standing for my right most of the time was proving myself how wrong I am. That is one thing. And also, on the other hand, are we proving something because we already have assumed or concluded that the opposite is true for us? And so we yeah. find simple arguments to prove. Yeah, proving is always looking, going outside yourself yeah. with the ways you want to go, or it's through a conversation with another person, or it is reading something, or it is really going into the internet and, and yeah, looking for what you are searching as a proof. <sighs> But is it that proving ourselves comes from that we grow up with, we have to prove our right? Yeah. 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 Wow. And wow. 
And also what's coming up now is the school system, how mm -hmm. that is based on the proof of the right. Because the questions you receive there is to get the right answer. Exactly. If you don't get the right answer, then you are wrong. Then you well, are not good enough. So we have to prove again that we are, that we yeah. don't believe any longer in ourselves. Wow, <laughs> this is an insane. And how much do we have, you know, just the basic, you have to prove your argument. Yeah. 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 And how much is that? The necessity within the school system, the necessity to prove your argument, preventing people from doing 180 because they wouldn't be able to prove, so they're not going there. Yeah. But what might there you, you about the 180 degree difference? But there you are saying something really interesting, Karina. You, you said like, you aren't or they aren't able to prove. And isn't it all about it? Mm -hmm. There is nothing ever able to be proved. Because there is only existing. Every energy is. There is no competition between one molecule and another that says, oh, but now... now that air is for me because I need that light and that air to grow. It doesn't, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Nature never proves. Prove yeah. How do you prove yeah. energy that I'm yeah. perceiving that kind of energy that tells me blah, 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 uh, because I'm willing to perceive that energy, but that doesn't go through your head. And then yeah. how do you prove it if it's not going through your head? Wow. And that brings for me also, so when you speak about something that isn't visible or you can't prove that it, it exists, then you are the same insane one. <laughs> then you are not normal. Yeah. <laughs> And then we have to prove again that we are normal, that we are present with that, that we can. <laughs> and then we turn around and there around. The other and perpetual around go, here we go around. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. Oh, we my God. We are crazy. <laughs> yes. But this, I, I wasn't really <laughs> prepared. I assumed prepared in which way this energy extends and how it is really driving our lives. We and can't drive. We can't drive, drive when those energies drives our life. Yes. And it's also because it's actually how much energy are we extending expanding in order to prove yeah. and therefore actually because you ultimately can't prove it's total waste of energy which is not life sustaining the earth does the earth waste energy Wow, and really, Karina, this is a really extended, expanded, extended energy. I wasn't aware of that it, it rules our life in this mm -hmm. way, how it contributes, yeah, to the insanity. Wow. And that, in a way, wow gets me to go back to more in the beginning what does how does the earth do it yeah to look at that and to really observe and being present with it mm.
And the first thing that comes for me, Karina, here is ease. Mm -hmm. The ease, the glory, the joy yep. is available. We are and we refuse <laughs> to receive. We refuse to be also and getting even more now. Hmm. It's something like yesterday or two days before, it was so loud in my world and so clear that so little people on earth are willing to choose joy, are willing to go for ease, really willing to explore it even, explore it even. And this brings me to that. So yes, now in this second, I can say, wow, I was willing to go and explore ease and to choose ease. But now with our conversation, I can say, what the heck? Even that was a lie. Because yeah, what I assumed that I chose it, but no way, no way, because there is so much more to let go of. A few years ago, I caught myself thinking, boy, that was easy. And catching myself, I realized that why am I not, why I'm commenting as this being special versus this being normal. And indirectly, implicitly, if I have to make that statement, am I really allowing ease into my life? Or am I fighting it? Yes. Yes. You know, and what are we entrained to? I mean, you can have joy and ease when you are a kid. But once you become a teenager to adult, oh, yeah. seriousness sets in and we just have to buckle up and work. Yep. And no pain, no gain. I mean, those are all entrainments that we've all been uh, yeah. subject to, maybe with cultural differences in the phrasing, but with the ultimate uh, message still probably being the same. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Wow, and how much, that's a question that's come up, that comes up now, how many of the psychic diseases, mental diseases even, coming from that proving, that proving that you can be as a child, you, you, there is that joy, but you aren't allowed to have that joy, or what you are aware of, that's it's not correct. Yeah. And it's on top, on top, on top, on top, on top, on top. Wow. Until you, you know, for some people, uh, I would say they might break under that burden of everything uh, being piled on them. Yeah. 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 And, and we see it happening now also as the collective indoctrination nearly that's going on is. Yeah. But that's when reality. You don't... And yeah. always has been. Yeah. But now it's in, in, Becomes in awesome. scale. Yes, it, it becomes real and, and it is. And even now, when you stay with what you know, when you go 
with whatever you choose when it's not in the line of the indoctrination then you are again the insane one mm -hmm. you are really yeah or the conspiracy theorist oh that that <laughs> oh that <laughs> Because you have a different opinion than everybody else. Yeah. But people have has to be fear for you because you are then the one who kills those others. Mm -hmm. You are the dangerous one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me laugh. Let me laugh. If it is like that, I am proud to be a weird one. I am really willing to receive every judgment around that and being the dangerous one for others. I am willing to be it. No problem. And let me quickly for people give the definition of what weird actually <laughs> means of spirit, fate or destiny. Yes. Well, apply that. Yes. But we don't have to prove it. No. Which is, and no. that is on the other hand, are you willing to be who you are? Yeah. Yeah, because this one, that proving, it, it was for a long time the energy that pulled me back to be truly, truly mm -hmm. me and choosing more of me because i thought yes but i have to pre prove my weirdness and then i have to prove also that that weirdness has truth in it and that proving that that truth is who i'm truly am and then proving you know it was also like in on top on top on top on top yeah. when you acknowledge the insanity of that because it's never Never, never possible to prove anything, whatever it is. Nope. Whatever it is. And is, for instance, just because it pops this way, is a zebra trying to prove that it is a zebra? <laughs> <laughs> and trying to prove that the actions that it takes as a zebra are the correct ones. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Perhaps they have a notebook when oh, they go home. I forgot that part. Yes. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. Because I know people that are doing, they journaling everything that happened in their life. I'm journaling also about questions and asks <laughs> it's something slightly different but really journaling for having the proof in case of it's insane and even the question i mean i journaled for years and there are two journals that still exist one was a travel journal about experiences on a trip and the other one is my last journal that only has a few pages in it all the other journals and the in between i burned because i didn't yeah. want that energy yeah yeah that i was coming from yeah but the sob stories the trauma and the drama and the oh how wrong can i be and why is this not working and the world is so against me, <laughs> whatever it is, you know, yeah. we journal about. But how much are we truly journaling, acknowledging our greatness, acknowledging the miracles we are creating? That would be a different yes. kind of journaling. Yeah, yeah. Then I started to do and asking about energies and some, the movement, journaling the movement. And mm -hmm. you love 
making pictures. I know you you love to play with photos and making photos and capture. And, yeah, not a perfect picture, but you know what I want to say. And something that always was for me is like, I didn't had the need of having pictures, but it, it was not a kind of the nature pictures, but pictures of me, of my family, brothers, mm -hmm. sisters, even my children. It, it yeah. was always something like, I have now two or three photos of my grandchildren, and every time I look at them, it's like, but who are you today? I ask the picture because a, a photo of ourselves, it's in that moment. And we are changing so much, even though those who think they don't choose or they don't change, we change every day again. We I'm do. Sorry. Jane, and that was really something that struck me when a scientist told me that uh it's change is not natural so to speak oh. i mean my ex-husband oh. told me that i broke the marriage promise by changing wow apply and this to I nature just thought, uh, look out in nature change is a constant it's a given yeah so, if Change wasn't natural. We weren't here now. There, there, is, there is one moment in nature where there is no change. Tell and me. that's if we use our language, it's the moment of death. Like a tree falls. In that moment, once it's down, there is no change. And then change starts again because the tree starts decaying and the animals come in and, and, and all of that. But there is, but is it then, point. is that the still point you were referring to? I, you could call it a still point, but it's just a moment. Or the turning point. point. Yeah. It's yeah. just a momentary event. It's not a natural, continuous you know, thing, because after that, as I said, change happens again. Yeah, for that, it's it's nearly not notable, that yeah. point of change, yeah, yeah. Wow, what a conversation, so much energy, so much that it brought up. Wow, thank you, Karina. Um, thank you, Marianne. <laughs> I know how we bounce off each other. Yes. Uh, so let me say I will choose for myself to, mm -hmm. to be more present with where I am assuming, what I am assuming. Yeah, everything. Yeah, it's something I will choose this week to go with and uh, we will see next week what yep. will be the subject and i you know for me it's been a fascinating experience to hear my thoughts yeah to perceive the energy of that thought <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and isn't it interesting because, yeah, the subject comes not knowing where it will lead to or where it will take us to. Yeah. And so, yeah, I love this. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next, Until next week, same time, same place. And thanks for joining mm -hmm. us. We really yes. appreciate your presence. See you next week. Bye-bye. Take care.